Yo, what's up everybody? So moving on to the next example, brace yourselves for this one because this is pretty much as tough of a question that you'll get in this chapter. It combines a lot of the concepts that we've covered so far, anything from external financing all the way to full capacity sales. Now, I would highly recommend you clicking the link in the description box to the lecture notes instead of writing all this out. You can just print those out for convenience before moving on with the video. And now moving on to the specifics of the question. So we have a company here with its most recent income statement and balance sheet. We're also told that the fixed assets, which are represented here on the balance sheet, are operating at 75% capacity. Costs, current assets, and accounts payable vary with sales or they're proportionate to sales. The company paid a $9 dividend on this net income here and will keep that payout ratio for the future. What is the external financing needed to support 40% growth in sales with no new debt or equity issue? So the first step you want to do is create a pro forma income statement. So we're told that we're growing the sales by 40%. So 450 times 1.4 would give us new sales of 630. We're also told that the costs vary with the sales. So they're also going to grow by 40%. So 400 times 1.4 gives us 560. And then subtracting those two figures, we get taxable income of $70. Now, if you look at the original income statement, we can tell that we're paying taxes of 40% because 20 out of 50, if you divide both of those, you would get 0.4. So assuming that we're paying the same amount of taxes for the pro forma income statement, we would pay $28 worth of taxes on that taxable income of 70. 70 times 0.4 gives us 28. So then subtracting the taxes from the taxable income, we would get a final net income of $42. Now we're also told that the company paid a $9 dividend and is going to keep that payout ratio. So on this net income of 30, $9 was paid as a dividend. So we could figure out what the payout ratio is, which is dividends over the net income, and we would get 30% for that. And since the company is maintaining that payout ratio of 30%, then we know on a net income of $42, the dividend projection projected to be paid out would be 30% of 42, which would give us 12.6. So on a net income of $42, 12.6 will be paid out as a dividend. And now we can get into making the pro forma balance sheet. So let's start off with current assets. We're told that current assets vary with sales. And since we're growing sales by 40%, we know the current assets are going to grow by 40% as well. So 400 times 1.4 would give us 560. Now the fixed assets, they don't vary with sales and let's actually figure them out last. Let's figure them out at the end of the balance sheet. The accounts payable, we're told they vary with sales. So taking that $100, multiplying it by 1.4, we would get 140. We're told that we're not issuing any new debt or equity right here so we know the long-term debt of 500 is going to stay the same now for the equity we're told that there's no new equity being issued so any increase in equity has to come from the retained earnings and we can figure that out from our pro forma income statement so our beginning equity figure amount was three hundred dollars and then our net income is 42 out of that $42, 12.6 is being paid out as a dividend. So then adding everything up, we would get a final equity amount of 329.4. So that would be our equity right there, 329.4. And now to finally figure out that fixed assets amount on the pro forma balance sheet, it's actually the exact same process as we did in the previous example. So the first thing we have to find is we have to find the full capacity sales of these fixed assets that we have because they're only operating at 75% capacity. So to find the full capacity sales, we would use this formula here. So the full capacity sales, that's what we're solving for. Currently, the fixed assets are used at 75% of their capacity. So we would put 0.75 for this bracket and they're currently producing sales for us of $450. So now we have to solve for that X variable. So then isolating for X, we would take the 450 divided by 0.75 and we would get full capacity sales of $600. So 
our fixed assets that we have currently of $500, they are capable of generating $600 worth of sales, even though they're only generating $450 at the moment. However, we want our sales to grow to $630. So it's obvious that we're going to have to buy new fixed assets because the current assets that we have of 500, they're not capable of generating 630. They're only capable of generating 600. So we need to add on to fixed assets to be able to generate that sales figure. And as we did in the previous example, to figure out that new fixed assets figure to generate $630 worth of sales, we're going to have to use ratios. So you would take the ratio of the current fixed assets of $500. So $500 of fixed assets is capable of generating $600 worth of sales. Well then, how much fixed assets is capable of generating $630 worth of sales. Basically, these ratios have to be the same. And now we can just cross multiply and solve for x. So 600 times x gives us 600x, and then 630 times 500 is here on the right side. Then divide both sides by 600. Isolating for x, we would get $525. So that is our new fixed assets amount, and that would go in the balance sheet here. So this would be 525. So we need $525 of fixed assets to generate $630 worth of sales. And now notice when we total both sides of the balance sheet, we get 1,085 on the left side and then 969.4 on the right side, and they aren't balancing. So we're going to have to get some kind of external financing on this right side in order for both sides to balance. And the specific amount we need for external financing is 115.6 for both sides of the balance sheet to balance. And I got that by just subtracting the totals. So that there is our final answer. So overall, not too bad of a question, very similar to the examples we've been doing. The trickiest part was figuring out what that new fixed assets amount would be to support that growth in sales up to 630. But uh, everything else is pretty much the same. The current assets, the accounts payable, they vary with sales. So you would grow those by 40% as well. The long-term debt would stay the same at 500 because there's no new debt being issued. There's no new equity being issued, so that increase in equity came from the retained earnings, which we calculated as net income minus dividends. You get your balance sheet, and then you realize that they don't balance, and then you get that external financing needed figure of 115 point. Six. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.